Hi, everyone. I'm Max Panola. I'm the ESG lead at Envision Blockchain. And today we're going to be going over how to create a policy in the Guardian from a standard. These are the major steps to creating a policy in the Guardian from a standard. The first step is going to be to identify the standard. In this case, we're going to be using the Vera VCS standard, which is the main standard for verifying carbon reductions and offsets. And the methodology that we're going to be talking about is the RED methodology, which stands for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. Once you've identified these two documents, you're going to review those documents and be careful to see any other documents that these documents refer to. While you're going through these documents, you want to identify roles, processes, data inputs, and calculation methodologies. From the roles and the process steps, you can develop the workflow from the data and calculation methods, you can create the schema. So to find this VCS standard, just go to the Vera website. It's under rules and requirements where you can find the latest version of the VCS standard. Under methodologies, you can find the red methodology that we'll be talking about today. So for example, if you're going through the red main framework, you will see in table two, it refers to various other modules, which are either mandatory or optional beyond what's covered in that document. So for example, these are the different project types. We're going to talk about APD, which is avoiding planned deforestation. And this table identifies the additional modules that you'll have to review. In addition to that, as you're going through documents such as the main standard, it, it can refer to other documents such as the monitoring report. You're going to, want to take notes of those as well. These are all the documents that you would need to review for a simple red APD project. And that list can get even larger if there are other project activities or contextual things that could have other requirements involved. So when you're going through these documents, such as the program guide, has a very clear overview of the roles and responsibilities. One of the major roles, for example, is the project proponent, which are the entity that's going to be conducting the project activities and requesting BCUs, which are verified carbon units. Each VCU represents one metric ton of carbon removed from the atmosphere. And then validation slash verification bodies, also known as VVBs, they validate projects and verify production. Diagram two will go over the main processes of the project life cycle. And from those pieces of information, you can construct the workflow, which has the roles such as the project proponent, which is going to be submitting the documentation such as the project description and the monitoring report, the VBBs, which are going to be validating and verifying those reports, and Vera, which is going to be reviewing and issuing VCUs into accounts so that they can be traded or retired to offset emissions. So as you're going through these documents, you wanna pay careful attention to all the applicable equations as well as the parameters that go into those equations. And you wanna track those from the main equation that's used to calculate the quantity of the asset, in this case, the VCUs. And you wanna follow the inputs of those equations down until you get to the raw data inputs. So for example, for VCU, it's basically going to be the net emission reductions over two periods of time minus a, a buffer, which is VCUs that will be issued into a buffer account to hedge a reversal risk that's associated with land use offset projects. But then you might be wanting to track how the actual emission reductions are calculated here in green. So that's actually another equation, which is also in the red main framework, which is here. And that's basically the baseline emissions minus the project scenario emissions minus the leakage being emissions that occur as a result of the project activities, but outside of the project boundary. For example, if you avoid deforestation in one area, that could cause an increase in deforestation outside of that project area. So that's to be accounted for as well. And then from here, you want to keep going down. So how is that calculated? It's basically the change in carbon stocks as a result of deforestation, degradation, natural disturbance, as well as greenhouse gas emissions 
as a result of deforestation and degradation activities. And then when you go to the equation for how to calculate, for example, the carbon stock change from deforestation, which is this equation in the MRED module. The MRED module is the equations and the parameters and the requirements for monitoring RED projects. Here you're finally getting down to raw data inputs such as the area of recorded de deforestation in the project area. As we saw, the inputs of some equations are actually the results of other equations. So what we have here is the basic structure of the schema, which involves some simple string schema types such as the project scope or the summary of the project description. But it also has the raw data inputs and also some auto calculated equations. As we mentioned, the inputs of a lot of these equations are actually the outputs of other equations. So we've structured that here and streamlined it. And from those equations and those data inputs, we were able to create the structure of this schema.